It's been a while, and now it's time for another damn video in order to look at the Asotin Basalts. Today we're just downstream from the Priest Rapids Dam, where there's a fairly long outcrop of Asotin Basalt from the Saddle Mountain Basalt units. The Asotin Basalts here weather tannish gray, and if we get a little closer, you can see there's a few vesicles here and there. It looks pretty fine-grained. There's a couple of fairly fresh surfaces, but I think we'll make our own. How about you? Oh, that's gone. Got this little chip here. It's definitely crystalline, but you can't see the individual crystals, so this is aphiric. There's a little bit of weathering. That's kind of what the little rusty rusty stains are, the kind of brownish on there. So this looks to be fairly uniform crystallinity, where there's no big crystals in there. In reading up on this basalt, there are rare olivine grains, but they're only about a half a millimeter in size, so they'd be really tough to spot by the, the naked eye. And there's rare plagioclase crystals, and the texture is Ophitic to dictytaxitic. Dictytaxitic is primarily plagioclase grains that make up the dominant framework of the basalt. So a lot of the plagioclase are intergrown with each other and are the primary mineral. Sometimes I think it can be tricky to tell what's entablature and what's colonnade, especially in a case like this where there are some linear features. There's kind of some blockiness to it, but they're not really well developed, so either they're, you know, kind of poorly developed columns, or it's more hackly uh, jointed entablature. What I thought was particularly interesting about the Asotan member is that it's not just the Asotan basalt here. There is another flow that erupted about the same time, 13.3 million years ago, called the Wilbur Creek basalt. And those mixed together to create what's known locally as the Hunsinger flow. Hunsinger? Hun Hunsinger. Back in the 90s, when the Priest Rapids quadrangle was mapped, this was called the Asotan Basalt, and there's no Wilbur Creek Basalt here as they, as they mapped it. Since that time, further studies, both geochemical and petrography, have suggested that the Asotan and the Wilbur Creek actually mixed together in their source region before they erupted somewhere over in the Clearwater Embayment in West Idaho which is kind of north of Boise, near the Nez Perce Reservation. And those mixed together erupted and flowed down an ancient salmon clear water channel and flooded part of the Pasco Basin, as a lot of these flood basalts tended to do. Back when they were mapped separately, it was said that the Asotan basalts were about 210 cubic kilometers of erupted basalt, and the Wilbur Creek erupted about 70 cubic kilometers. So, Combined, they're about 300 cubic kilometers, and that was enough to reach the Oregon and Washington coast in a couple of areas. Over on the Oregon coast, you had these different unit here. You had these soft sediments, and the Asotan basalt, or the Wilbur Creek slash Asotan basalt, actually burrowed under those basalts and mixed them all up as it went to the coast. So it's not just a surface feature in a lot of places. You can find these as almost dikes, even though they were erupted over in Idaho, you find them as dikes over in western Washington and western uh, Oregon. And dikes are basically just non-horizontal basalt in this case, where they were, they, they channeled under the soft sediments and then squeezed their way up through those sediments to create vertical basalts. And those are called rootless dikes because they are supposed to have some sort of source feature down in the bottom. But in this case, the source feature was over in Idaho. Well, you may have noticed as I was talking, behind me, these Asotan slash Wilbur Creek basalts are actually tilted at, I don't know, maybe 10 degrees or so, where they're dipping northwest. And that's because in this region, there's been a lot of compression and there's a, actually a thrust fault on this, I think on the south side of the Columbia. And so these basalts have been kind of squished together and as a result have tilted up like this. This looks to be about 
maybe five meters or so of basalt. Locally, the Soat and Slash Wilbur Creek basalts are a maximum of about 30 meters thick. But you know, that's, that's still quite a lot. That's respectable. Thanks for joining me on today's Better Know Basalt. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Asotan member. And if you're in the area of Priest Rapids Dam, you can come down here to the trail race, uh, open public access area and see for yourself. And I hope you join me next time as we get to better know a basalt. Plane.